And your book, which is the Pelvic Floor Bible, obviously that covers so many different areas, but let's go back to basics. So where is our pelvic floor and and what does it do and why do we have one? (laughs) Okay, so our pelvic floor is the bottom of our core and we know more and more about our core. The core is our waist bit, our our middle, if you like, our middle being. That's right. It starts with your diaphragm at the top Mm -hmm. and with your lower abdominals at the front and the lower back muscles at the back and your pelvic floor is the bottom of the core and it's a hammock of muscles. So if you think of your pelvic girdle, at the bottom of it you have a hammock of muscles going from your tailbone at the back to your pubic bone at the front Mm -hmm. and side to side on the sit bones, the bones that we sit on. And they are, well, they're holding our insides in. Without our pelvic floor, our innards would simply fall out. Right, that's quite important then. (laughs) They're quite important. (laughs) And with the core working together, they keep us stable, they help us to walk in a straight line, they're good for our posture. Mm -hmm. Um, But for for our continence, they're very important to keep us continent of both urine and feces, and they help us when we're pregnant and when we're having babies. Right. So what role does that sort of like sling of muscle have then? Because you talk about continence, but that not that to do with the bladder and the urethra? Yes. So the pelvic floor, it goes around the urethra, it goes around the vagina, and it goes around the anus. And when they're working properly, we stay dry. So for example, If you were to cough or sneeze or laugh, you would stay dry because your pelvic floor would um, contract at that moment to stop you from wetting yourself. Mm -hmm. Your pelvic floor is a little bit weak. When you cough, a little bit of urine might leak out because Mm. that's the pelvic floor not working at its maximum and it's not shutting off tightly enough at the urethra to allow us to stay dry. So should we be really focusing on our core? I know, I mean, we write, Liz, our wellbeing, we we write a lot about Pilates, for example. Yes. And that always starts, I mean, that makes me sit up straight just talking about it, (laughs) um, with, you know, sitting up straight, putting your core on, as they Mm. say, so you sort of activate your core. When we're doing that and we're we're tightening up inside, is that automatically then having a good effect on our pelvic floor? Not necessarily. You need to right. activate your pelvic floor as well. S- separately. Yes, so that's and that's sort of pulling up. How do we know where it is and, and how to feel it? Okay, so I think those that's the most important thing. If you're going to actually do pelvic floor exercises, mm-hmm. is are you doing them right and are you right. doing them often enough? Those are your mantra. Okay. Are you doing it correctly? Because if you're not, there's no point. And are you doing it often enough? So to do it correctly... I recommend various things. So one is to sit on uh, a hard surface, like a, um, you know, a, an exercise ball or the arm of your sofa. So you position your sort of vulval area really on the hardish surface. You feel mm-hmm. it in contact with it. And then the idea is that you contract the anal sphincter, so you are trying to control diarrhea or a wind, and pulling up with the vaginal muscles Um, imagine you were trying to stop peeing mid-flow and you squeeze, lift and hold for the count of five and then gently relax. And you do that five times. And I think three times a day. Okay, three times every day. Yes, every day. And I think we should all be doing it every day. Doing your pelvic floor exercise, I think, three times a day is, is, is manageable because you we know we yes. all clean our teeth twice a day, so we could do it then. We could think if yeah, you know, if we got into that mindset of actually that's mm. what I'm going to do now. As yeah. I clean my teeth, I do my pelvic floor exercises. That's it's just right. it's a habit, isn't it? And I think is it they say you've got to repeat something thirty times for it to become a habit. So, that's that's a very very good thought. I, I, I think yeah. they have scientifically proved mm. that. So if you can do it for sort of one month, set that as your yeah. journey, and then you just automatically the minute you put up, you know, pick up your toothbrush, that's that, that you, know, will you be start it. pulling up your pelvic floor. I think it's important if when you do that, you actually can't feel anything happening at all. Mm. Um, you need to sort of think about other th- ways of trying to see how to contract the pelvic floor. And one way is to when you're peeing on the loo, mm-hmm. try to stop midstream. Now, we don't recommend at all that you keep doing that. I was going to say, good I, I, I heard that people were, were against that now. It, very. Um, it's, not, it's not good for the bladder, but is it, it is. It, it's a good way. Sometimes you it's don't a test, an empty. I guess. It's a test. Okay. And as long as you do it once just to see if you can, right. that's a good little test. Mm-hmm. Or if, you have a, if you're a tampon user, have a tampon inside, try to pull on the string and see if you can like, do a tug of war with it. Really? That's a good way of seeing you can <laughs> squeeze your pelvic floor. You know, it's, it's yeah. very local. Yes. We're trying to make sure. I mean, obviously, I examine all my ladies, so I can tell by examining them and yeah. connecting them to equipment with graphs 
whether they're using their muscles correctly, but we don't all have access to that. No. So it's important if you're actually doing the pelvic floor exercises, you are using the right muscles. If if after all of those things, mm. you still think, oh my God, I've, I just can't tell if I'm doing the right thing right. or using the right muscles, please seek help.